Terry. Good to see you. Hello, Professor. You know, today is Casper's birthday. Oh, really? Now that's something I didn't know about. Happy birthday, Casper. Thank you, Professor. You know, Professor, we have ordered a cake for him. A turtle-shaped one. Now that's very thoughtful, Cherry dear. But the cake is more of my liking, Professor. I love the creamy flowers they make on top. Yummy they are. I'm sure they are, Cherry dear. But are some of those flowers real ones? Real flowers? But do we eat real flowers, Professor? Yes, Cherry dear. We can eat some real flowers in either raw or cooked form. This is interesting, Professor. Sure. Seems like this time the topic of the day has grabbed your interest so much that you forgot we have friends watching us as well. Let's welcome them, Cherry dear. Oh, yes. Hello, friends. Welcome to Science for Juniors. I am Dr. Oxy Jan and this curious little girl is my assistant, Cherry. Now, food is something we can't live without. Right, kids? But have you ever wondered from where do we get all the variety of food that we eat? Honestly, Professor, I'm always too busy enjoying the food. No problem. Science for Juniors has all the answers you need. Buckle up, the sci-fi ride is about to begin. In this module, you will learn about plant parts and animal products that are used as food. We eat different parts of a plant as food. Sometimes we eat the leaves of a plant, sometimes fruits, roots, stems and sometimes even flowers. Leaves of plants like lettuce and spinach are eaten. Fruits are source of various nutrients which are consumed both raw and cooked. Example, apples and oranges. Roots are the underground part of the plant that is eaten both raw and cooked. Carrot, radish, turnip are examples of edible roots. Stems grow both above the land and beneath it. Sugarcane, potato, ginger and onion are some of the stems that are eaten as a source of food. Cereal grains such as rice, wheat, maize, legumes like black gram, pigeon pea, lentils and soya bean forms main staple food. Flowers such as cauliflower or broccoli are eaten cooked or raw in the form of salad. Flour of banana is also eaten in cooked form. Certain plants provide us with two or more edible parts. For example, the mustard plant. We get oil from its seeds and also use its leaves as a vegetable. Likewise, we eat both the fruit and the stem of a banana plant as food. Professor, my mom fries fish in it. Wow, Cherry, we just found out you have interest in cooking as well. I just like to eat, Professor. I personally believe if you like to eat, you can certainly cook well too, my dear. We'll try to cook too, Professor. But where do I get all the ingredients to cook? The ingredients used to prepare food come from different sources. For example, fruits and vegetables are obtained from plants. Rice and wheat are obtained from paddy and wheat plants grown in fields. Spices add to the taste of our food. Spices are plant products obtained from different parts of a plant. Seeds that are used as spices are cumin seeds, cardamom, and mustard seeds. Fruits that are used as spices are red pepper, red chilies and black pepper. Few leaves such as basil and peppermint are used as condiments in our food. 
roots used as spices are ginger and turmeric. Barks of some trees are used as spices. Examples are dalchini and cassia. Spices such as clove and saffron are obtained from the flowers of plants. Here is an interesting activity for you. Put a few dry seeds of moong or chana into a water-filled cup and leave them overnight. Drain the water from the cup the next day and wrap the seeds with a wet cloth. Now, set them aside for one more day. Hey, what do you observe the next day? A small white structure has grown out of the seeds. In other words, the seeds have sprouted. Kids, how about you take this activity as homework and see the sprouted seeds for yourself? Excellent idea, Professor. We'll carry it to school as well to show my friends. Good thought, Cherry dear. Now, by what you said earlier, you seem to be a fan of fish, right, Cherry? Yes, I love fish. Well, me too. Come, let's learn about how animals contribute to our food. Like plants, animals do serve as sources of certain foods. Foods like milk, eggs, meat, chicken, fish, prawns, pork and beef are obtained from animals. Animals like cows, goats and buffaloes give us milk. Milk and milk products like butter, cream, cheese and curd are used the world over. High nutritious oil like cod liver oil is obtained from fish. It's good for our health. Bet you must have eaten honey. Yummy, isn't it? But did you know how honey is produced? Ever seen a beehive and bees buzzing around it? The bees collect nectar from flowers, convert it into honey and store it in their beehive. So do we pull out honey from the beehive, Professor? Yes, there are trained professionals who carefully pull out the honey from these hives without getting stung by the bees. Holy moly! Don't they feel scared? Like I said, Cherry, trained professionals do the job. They wear masks to protect themselves. I like honey. Thank you, bees. Well, that's just about bees. I have some more interesting food-related facts about other animals that will surprise you. Do you know? Just like the bees, butterflies and hummingbirds also suck nectar from the flowers. The interesting thing about them is their mouth parts, which are shaped like straws that helps them suck the nectar. Talking about animal produce, eggs are something we all enjoy, don't we? But did you know that the most commonly eaten eggs are not just obtained from hens? Animals like geese and duck lay eggs which are also relished by many throughout the world. With eggs come little chickens that hop around all day. But giving them company are the speedy squirrels. These squirrels always have a backup plan for winters. When they know food will be hard to find, they stock food by burying nuts and seeds in the ground to eat during the winters. Now, that's what we call advanced planning. Right kids? So squirrels are smart like humans then, right professor? Well, they certainly plan better than us, don't they kids? What about my little Casper professor? Any facts about turtles? Just one I can recall right now. Turtles have been around for more than 215 million years on earth. Holy moly, that's a long time. 
Well, many plants and animal species have been around for centuries and have been a constant source of nutrition for us. That's Mother Nature taking care of us. Right on, Professor. Well, all this food talk has made me hungry. Come, let's take a quick recap of what we have learned so far. Let's summarize what we have learned. The food we eat comes from different sources. We eat different parts of plant like root, stem, leaves, flower and seed as our food. More than one part of the same plant can also be eaten as food. For example, both seeds and leaves of mustard plant are consumed as food. Plants and animals are the major sources of our food. For example, we obtain rice, wheat, pulses etc. from plants. Food like milk, curd, butter etc. are obtained from animals. Honey bees collect nectar from flowers and convert it into honey which is consumed by humans. So when and where is the birthday party, Cherry? The party begins as soon as we reach home, Professor. So what are we waiting for? Kids, can't say about you but all this food talk has certainly made me hungry and a birthday party is just what I'm looking for. So it's time we bid farewell with the promise to see you guys again same time same place for another sci-fi ride. Till we meet again, you all stay fit and stay curious. Bye-bye.